Hello everyone, it is Rachel here and today with the help of my good friend Bona Lisa we are going to show you the lower limb arterial supply. So let's begin with the arterial supply of the hip and gluteal region. So the arterial supply of the entire lower limb begins with the common iliac arteries on the left and the right side that originate from the abdominal aorta not shown here. The common iliac artery is split into two parts, the external and the internal iliac artery. The internal iliac artery continues as the anterior division and the posterior division. The anterior division then becomes the inferior gluteal artery, whereas the superior gluteal artery comes from the posterior division of the internal iliac. Now these two arteries are important as being the primary source of blood for all the gluteal muscles. And they both enter the gluteal region through the greater sciatic foramen. Now there are a few more minor branches coming off of these two vessels, namely the obturator artery, which exits along with the obturator vein and the obturator nerve through the obturator canal in the obturator foramen over here. Furthermore, we've got the iliolumbar over here and the posterior sacral arteries that go through all the sacral foramina and these two arise from the posterior division. So while the internal iliac artery over here is the main source of blood for a lot of different muscles in the pelvic region, the external iliac artery is important as it becomes the femoral artery um, and this change occurs at the inguinal ligament over here. So before it does become the femoral artery, there are a couple of branches, namely the inferior epigastric and the deep circumflex iliac artery here, which supplies a lot of the um, areas of the ilium. So the femoral artery is the main source of blood for all the anterior muscles of the thigh here. It's a big artery that runs all the way to the back of the popliteal fossa, and it gives off a lot of different branches. First of all, let's talk about the most important branch gives off, which is the deep femoral or profunda femoris artery. This artery runs closely to the femur and has three branches. First, it has all these perforating branches over here. And these branches move through the adductor magnus to give um, blood to a lot of the medial and posterior areas of the thigh. Next, there are also medial and lateral circumflex arteries that come off the profunda femoris. This here is the lateral circumflex femoral artery and posteriorly we have the medial circumflex femoral artery. Now these um, have three branches, the descending branch, transverse branch and the ascending branch, whereas the posterior division only has two branches, which is the ascending branch and the descending branch. And these retinacular arteries come off both the medial and lateral circumflex arteries and they create a trochanteric anastomosis here. Now it's good to highlight here that the medial circumflex femoral artery over here is particularly susceptible because it is easily damaged in femoral neck fractures, cutting off the blood supply here and resulting in a vascular necrosis of the femoral neck and head. Now the femoral artery here continues down to the, through the anterior thigh and what and makes its way to the posterior side of the skeleton. As you can see from the flowchart on the left, there is a gray line that separates the upper half and lower half of the lower limb. And the reason why it's there is because now we're gonna flip over and the medial and lateral sides are going to change as we are now looking um, at the back of the human body. Now the popliteal artery over here gives off eight different branches, both on the medial and the lateral side of the body. First, it gives off the superior lateral genicular artery. And as well as superior, there's also an inferior over here. And to the left or the medial side, we also have a superior, a tiny middle, and an inferior genicular, an inferior genicular artery over here. As well, we have sural arteries coming from both sides of the popliteal artery. And to the right, we have an additional posterior tibial recurrent artery. All these arteries here provide blood for the knee capsule and joint. 
Now, before the popliteal artery continues as the posterior tibial artery here, it gives off a branch, a big branch called the anterior tibial artery, which winds around all the way back to the front of the tibia. And it gives off many branches to supply blood to the dorsal side of the foot. And as the anterior tibial artery moves between the tibia and the fibula, it becomes the dorsalis pedis artery, which is somewhere where we can often take the pulse. The dorsalis pedis has a lot of branches, but it's mainly important for giving blood to the tarsal bones and the dorsal metatarsals. And this, along with the posterior tibial artery, are the main arteries of the foot. From here, the dorsalis pedis artery gives rise to the arcuate artery across here, which then gives off branches um, to the deep plantar arch, and which also give off the dorsal metatarsal arteries. Now going back to the posterior tibial artery, this artery gives rise to the fibular artery, which along with the anterior and posterior tibial arteries, goes down to supply the ankle and the foot. This fibular artery gives off muscular branches along the way down that supply the lateral leg and ends in a network including the lateral calcaneal, which means heel, branches, and the lateral malleolar network around the lateral malleolus of the ankle. The medial malleolar network, on the other hand, mostly comes from the anterior tibial artery, not the fibula.